And the title of today's talk is Scars. And about 19 years ago, I had a fellow doctor, physician, come in to see me. And he had a mole on the left cheek. And it was a pretty good sized mole. And he wanted the mole removed without a scar present. And that event has shocked me in that the very basis of healing and surgery is scar formation. Now, I'm going to cover three main topics today. One is going to be a brief overview of normal healing, some of the problem type scars, as well as areas of the body where there needs to be caution. Now, with any wound, or healing, one of the first things that takes place is blood vessels grow into that area. So the scar, the area, the healing becomes bright red, mainly from the blood vessels. And as the blood vessels leave, there is scar that starts to form, but it's very disorganized. And it's made of a building block called collagen. It's what I refer to as the leather layer of skin. And as time goes on, and we're talking about a considerable period of time, the scar that is formed totally reorganized and it lines up much like these ropes are lining up in this picture, closely knotted together and very aligned. So scar healing, normal scar healing takes 15 months uh, or longer and it goes from red to white. Now there are mainly four types of problem scars. One is it can be wide, the other can be indented pigmented scars or what's called keloid scars. Now this shows a wide scar that is formed. It's not the thin line that you'd like to see. It's a widened scar. Now this is a picture of a footprint and it demonstrates the fundamental problem with uh, indented scar in that the reason you see this is because the shadows that are created Now, some people will make the mistake of exposing their scars early on to the sun. And when that happens, oftentimes the scar becomes brown as a result of the early sun exposure. Keloid scars. And think of a keloid as being like a rope. It's raised, it's thick, and it's much like this piece of uh, licorice. It's thick, strong, hard, tough, wide, and raised. So the problem scars are wide, indented, pigmented, and keloid scars. Now there are certain areas of the body that are more prone to widen and pigmented scars and raised scars, and those areas are the mid-chest, the back, and the shoulders. So if you look between the two, the muscles and the nipple area is the mid-chest area. And surgery in that area is much more likely to produce widened, raised, uh, abnormal scars, as are the shoulders and the back area. And the shoulders and back, it makes sense just because every time you're moving or stretching your back, tremendous forces are placed apart across that scar and, and creates that tendency for it to stretch. Now, in the future, we'll cover the different stages of healing and go into some more depth of the healing process. And uh, I want to thank you all for spending this time with me and looking forward to seeing you in the future.